I want to say welcome back to another Late Night with Locke show. Uh, again, this show started out with just us wanting to connect with the DMV area, former Terps, uh, current Terps, fans, supporters, alumni, everybody, man, just to take our minds off of the pandemic. And uh, it's been it's been great for all of us. I know it's been good for me to break up a monot the monotony of, of long days. And so Tuesdays and Fridays, we're right here with you on Late Night with Locks, talking everything DMV, everything Terps, and uh, it's been it's been great for the soul. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for all the love you continue to show us on, on Late Night with Locks. I want to thank Bruno Fernando and Aunt Cowan for coming on uh, last, uh, last Friday. And I want to wish Bruno again uh, much luck as you continue to work through the pandemic and in your uh, future there in the NBA. And for my guy Ant, I want to wish you well as you continue your preparation uh, to, to, to take the NBA by storm. Uh, we want to see both you guys do well. Um, I can't thank you enough. If you missed the show, again, you can always catch the Rewind on NBC Sports Washington. Uh, you can catch it on our Maryland Athletics YouTube channel, as well as the Here to Terps podcast. All three platforms rerun the Late Night with Locks episodes, and we're very thankful for those platforms. Uh, again, you know, we had tough news. We learned tough news yesterday as former Maryland head football coach Roy Lester uh, passed away from the COVID-19. And we want to send condolences and, and prayers to his family and all the former players whose lives he impacted was such a, a, a staple here in the DMV area, a high school coach that had great success, uh, took on the Maryland job during a, a tough time and really laid the foundation, in my opinion, for the success that Jerry Claiborne had. And so, again, condolences and prayers to uh, Coach Lester and his family. And, again, uh, our, our hearts are with you guys. Uh, I want to take a second, again, to thank all the frontline workers, as we do every week, uh, the job you guys do. I just can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough as we continue to work through uh, this pandemic. And again, you guys know who you are, the grocery store clerks, the first responders, the police, firemen, doctors, nurses, uh, everybody, man, the people that deliver, the delivery people, everybody that really uh, has had a hand on keeping us moving forward uh, as a country. So again, I want to thank you guys and uh, continue to just say thank you. Um, you know, tonight's show, as I said, was one that I'm really excited about. Um, we got two people that represent the black and gold of the red, white, black and gold, Steeler Nation. And we're going to start the show off with a guy that I've gotten to know, probably met him back in around 1997 when he was a young ball coach. And I was a young assistant at Maryland. Uh, he's a native of the 757 uh, down there in the Tidewater area, graduate of William & Mary College. We've been in the business a long time, and man, I've had a pleasure of watching him continue to develop uh, as a head coach, as a leader, and a guy that I, I do lean on um, for advice when I need it. So was a defensive back coach for the Buccaneers, won a Super Bowl, and then took his own team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and won a Super Bowl as well. Mike Tomlin, Coach T. Oh, there he is. What's going on, Coach? How you doing? Coach T, what's up with you, man? Man, just, you know, just trying to find a find a way to make a way in the middle of this pandemic, man, just like you. I know you are. Well, I, I decided I needed to have a, a part-time gig, so I got into this talk show host deal and part-time comedian. I don't know if you saw my skit. Did man, my hey, skit? Hey, I, I, hey, I respect your versatility, man. I like how you're doing it these days. That, yeah, that's what somebody, you call pivoting. <laughs> somebody told me the word diminutive and spasticity to make sure I use those two words. And it was a guy that used to spend some time in, on, in your organization. Scotty said, Montgomery. Coach Montgomery. <laughs> Coach Montgomery said, make sure you use spasticity and diminutive. Those two words that he'll know where they came from. So he, well, you know, you know, Scotty is Duke educated and he got he gotta he gotta make sure that you know it in every conversation. The smartest guy in the room. A typical Duke brand. <laughs> gotta be the smartest guy in the room. To be, and I got to tell you, I had to look up the word spasticity to see what it meant. I didn't want yeah, to use I, it. For a while there, I thought he made it up. No, it was a, <laughs> it's a real word, but again, another Duke guy. Well, look, man, I appreciate you taking time. I know you guys are just starting up with your uh, work, your your uh, 
installed and your OTAs per se virtually. Um, and I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. What's been going on in your life, man, during this pandemic? I know for us in the college game, what have you been doing uh, as a coach and as a, a as a family to get through? You, you know, for us professionally, we had we had the distraction of the draft and draft preparation and the challenges of having to do it remotely and prepare remotely. Uh, there was a lack of information and, and exposure to the young men. So professionally, man, we were busy getting acclimated to communicating through Zoom and things of that nature and, and getting ourselves ready for a process. You know how it is when you're on the clock, um, there's, there's a result that's expected and the process is irrelevant. So, you know, we were having to, having to navigate these times, man, to make sure that we were ready to go and had a good process and felt really good about our draft, our draft preparation. And just on the home front, man, just making sure that family and loved ones are safe and have what it is they need. I'm blessed enough, man. Years ago, I was able to move my parents up here to Pittsburgh. And so they're just a mile down the road from me. So I didn't have that angst of having to worry about them at home, man. I, you know, now my mom didn't let me come in the house. <laughs> <laughs> my no mom following the shelter in place to the letter. But hey. it's good to know that they're safe and all is well. And that's kind of been our focus. Well, I tell you what, man, I got to give a shout out to your wife, Kia, right? Uh, yes. I know she's a fashion designer, and I know she took her operation and basically shifted it when the pandemic hit to providing, you know, masks for the healthcare providers with her, her fashion uh, operation. And again, hats off to her for that, that shift in, in, in terms of being able to get that type of material out to the frontline workers, man. So uh, hats off to, to Kia as well, man. Yeah, Let's thank you for that. Bit. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, the draft. You talked about uh, going into it and having to do the research without probably, as we like to say, getting your hands on the guys. Um, talk about how that process went to you, went through with you guys without having the pro days. What, what did you guys rely on in terms of making the decisions from a skill set? But then I know those face-to-face -face meetings are really important to the steel organization to kind of find out character. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a lot of the tangible things, the things, the measurable things, you know, it was unchanged by the circumstance. The guys have the tape. You can turn the tape on and, and watch their tape. Um, but as you say, getting out on campuses and getting to touch them and feel them and know them and, and the people that they come across, we lack some of those. And be quite honest with you, man, you got to lean on relationships. You know, um, you know, we've known each other for a long time and got friends all over the college football landscape and and you got to lean on those type of relationships uh people that you can pick the phone up and give a call to and their word means something and they can give you a recommendation whether it's positive or negative information in these circumstances is what we needed definitive information and 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 we felt good about the information that we got uh that's why we were so excited about getting those two terps uh, I've seen a lot over those guys over the course of their careers in terms of their quality of play, uh, but everybody saw that. I was really comfortable with the inside knowledge that we had based on the relationships with you guys and, and the past experiences of Matt Canada working there. It was really helpful in terms of us knowing the things that they need to do to take the next step. We all like to sit back and look at a, a prospect or a draft pick and what they're capable of doing right now. But as coaches, man, we always got to be on the grind in terms of how we can take them to the next level and knowing a little bit about them positively and negatively, where they come from, what their aspirations and hopes and dreams are, helps you in that regard. And, man, we're so excited about, about getting McFarland and Brooks, man. They're going to be great Steelers and uh, feel really good because we know a little bit about them, their background, their successes, their challenges, and that's going to help us moving forward. Well, I, I know that, and as we segue into those two, which to me, uh, having an opportunity to coach both those guys for one year, I really feel like the ceiling, I mean, they, they have such a huge ceiling for growth. And the one thing I know, based on who you are as a person, like you said, those that long-standing relationship, I think is a match made in heaven for those two to be under your tutelage, as well as those guys and what they'll bring to the table uh, to the steel organization, which I know, uh, of, of all the organizations in, in, in the NFL, you guys are one of the ones that are well-respected for how you do your business. And so 
uh, to get those two turfs, I was excited to see. Uh, it's great anytime we get our guys drafted. I know I get in trouble down here. You know, I already had to uh, kind of tell people why I have you on here because for some reason people down here don't like Pittsburgh very much. But I told them it's bigger than Pittsburgh and Baltimore. You took hey, two turfs. Hey. I thought you were swimming in shark-infested waters. Now I was going to accept your invite, but <laughs> but I know what part of the country you live in. <laughs> well, I, I just took a little bit of heat. Talk a little bit about your uh, having evaluated both these guys. Give me your opinion on what you like, what you saw when you watched the tape with Anthony McFarland, because we know he had a, a, a his last year. He was banged up most of the year, and as I told people, the guy tried to play through it, and there's nothing worse than a speed guy with a bum wheel. And so we rested him. He would have kept playing, but we, I wound up putting him on the shelf, and we got to see him get stronger there in the, the last game of the year. He had a big game. What jumped out on tape to you with Anthony? You know, he has the awesome blend of youth and experience. You know, we, we drafted Derwin Gray uh, from a year ago. Man, and I remember McFarlane on Derwin's tape. And right. so we're not talking about a guy that had a one-year body of work. We're talking about a young guy who's played a lot of ball and played it at a high level uh, on a big stage, and, and we found comfort in that. He wasn't a guy that we had to get to know over the course of the 2019 season or hear about. We went into the 2019 season knowing about his exploits and talents, and so it made the evaluation process really an easy one. Um, man, his talents speak for themselves, his stop-and-go quickness his game-breaking ability in terms of his ability to make big plays. Uh, we're excited about. We feel like we got some talent in the backfield, but we feel like he's got a skill set that's a little bit different than the guys that we got in our backfield uh, in terms of his speed and open grass ability. So he's going to have an opportunity to contribute. There's a natural niche for him there, and we're excited about getting him into the fold and, and letting him do what he does. You know, one of the things that I, I... – and he he, ain't, he didn't like this very much during the season, but I made him catch punts every time we punted the ball, because, whether in practice. I mean, he went the whole year, and I'm going to tell you right now, he can return punts along with kicks. It's not something he likes to do, but all year all year long we had Zook back there with him, and Zook would have him back there and watching him and charting him catch punts. And I think in the return game uh, with his ability – it just gives them extra opportunities to get touches. And I'm a big believer when you get a playmaker touches, they make big plays for you eventually. So just so I'll give you my insight. You don't have any tape of him catching punts. He can return kicks, but I would say he can get back there and can return punts too. Hey, Locks, I promise you, I don't care where good ideas come from. You know, <laughs> give them to me. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about my, my the heartbeat of the Terps last year, the last couple of years is a guy that I really thought his versatility is what stood out. I know during his career here, Ant, uh, Antoine played in the box. He played rover. He played safety. We had him on the deep third part of the field, deep half this year. What things jumped out to you about Antoine? You know, much like McFarland, we're not talking about a one-year body of work. Um, all of us, and I mean us, is in the National Football League, had our eyes on Savage a year ago, uh, who – understandably went in the first round. So you couldn't watch Savage tape without watching that partner in crime that he had back there. And so you went into the 2019 season with a sense of anticipation about what this guy was capable of, man, and he delivered. Uh, he, he plays with great energy and emotion. Uh, you see it. His love for the game is evident. He, he, I hadn't been around him, but I just know he's the type of guy when he walks in the room, he brings the gas with him. Uh, he's an energy bringer, not an energy drainer, uh, a good teammate in that way, a football lover. And you can always find places for guys like that, um, whether he's playing the safety position, sub package, linebacker position, or, or special teams. I know he's going to bring that energy to all that we ask him to do. And I uh, can't wait to get, get started with him as well. You checked all the boxes, man. The, the guy was the heart and soul of our team. Uh, didn't maybe have the success during his career from a team standpoint, but when you saw, when there were plays made on the defense side of the ball, 25 usually was around it. Before I let you go, I got to make sure I get my turf plug in here. Now, you grew up watching your big bro play for my beloved Terps during an era when the Terps used to rule roost a little bit. Uh, talk a little bit about, as a teenager growing up, having opportunities to watch your, bro your brother Ed 
play safety here for the Terps and what that experience was like coming up to support him? Man, you know, make a long story short, Coach, man, we were Terps. You know, we were, we were Bobby Ross football campers. You know, that was the first football camp I ever went to. Um, and back then, you know, money was tight, man. You know, I, I'd get the football camp for Christmas and didn't have to wait six months to cash in on it. <laughs> get it in the envelope. Get it in the envelope with the, the application, man. You go on the camp, huh? <laughs> uh, it, it broke up a little bit. Yeah, we good. We're back. So, so I, I know Ed is in I, I, this area. Uh, he's excited. We can't. I can't leave without telling you. I know Ed and the Thomas family are excited about having Dino right here, uh, following in his uncle's footsteps. Um, I know for me, being a coach and having a son that plays, you always try to separate that dad and coach situation. And people ask me all the time, like, how much? I say, look, when Coach T comes down, he's dad. We ain't got him down on the field. We ain't got him on the He's coming to, coming to check out his baby boy, man. So, again, I just want to thank you for taking time, man. Time is the most valuable commodity we have. And we really believe that when people give you their time, they're giving you something of great value. So to come on late night with Lux, talk a little bit about drafting two big-time Terps, man, to add to that steel organization, I think, like I said, it's a match made in heaven. And I just want to wish you luck. Keep your family safe, man. And if you need anything down here, we're here for you. And uh, we are Ravens and Redskins, but I am a, a, a Mike Tomlin fan. So I root for the Steelers except against the Ravens or the Redskins, just so you know. Man, much respect. I understand your position, and you know I'm down with the Turks, man. Uh, I'll see you guys very soon, and thanks for having me. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Mike T., Mike Tomlin, head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, just reflecting on the draft and uh, what's going on in his life as a, as a head coach working through the pandemic. Uh, again, I'm going to keep the show rolling because I think we got our next guest already here. But, um, you know, the next guy is what I think the DNA of the DMV is all about. And I know I use that a lot. But there is a DNA of guys that come from this area, and it usually entails toughness, uh, pride, usually, you know, kind of gritty, you know, underdog mentality, uh, a guy that faced a serious injury his senior year in high school right near the end, uh, overcame that. And I'm going to just tell you, I've recruited the PG County area since 1992, the DMV area since 1992. And there's never been a, a, a recruit who's, I've gone into every school in this area. And when he was coming out of high school, he was rated as one of the best athletes to ever come out of Prince George's County. And I know, uh, unfortunately, with the, the leg injury he had his senior year, he was selected the 4A Offensive Player of the Year with a quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, has been an all-star for, for the Terps from the day he stepped on the field. Uh, he was a second-team All-Big Ten guy. Uh, he led the Big Ten this past season and was ninth in the country with 5.8 solo tackles per game. And he was the 2019 MVP of the Terps football team. Let's welcome Antoine Twan Doe Brooks Jr. Twan, where you at, man? There's a little slow on the trigger today. I'm sorry, I can't throw a beer under the bus. No problem. Oh, As we wait on Twan to come in, let's see if I can sneak a question in. Um, what is the most fun thing about my job? You know what, I would say making a difference in 18 to 22 year olds lives. It's amazing uh, to see the transformation of when a kid comes to campus as an 18 year old and then they leave as grown men. So um, to me, I think one of the best things and the most rewarding thing I get as a coach is just to see the maturation process that these guys go through from the day they come on campus uh, very unsure, uh, a little bit insecure to see just the confidence grow from their success they have on or off the field. And so uh, to me, that's one of the, the great uh, rewards of my job. Question was, did I finish Ozarks and what am I watching now? I did finish Ozarks and unfortunately, I'm just going to tell you guys, when you start watching these Netflix shows and you got to get hooked. It really screws up your uh, sleep pattern because I spent 
um, all night one night going through basically season two and three. I got through and basically two nights and uh, last week, and it was not good in the morning when I had to get up to work out because I was on fumes. So if you're out there, schedule times to watch it. Don't do like I did and watch it late, late at night. Uh, oh, what am I doing to celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Um, I'm doing Late Night with Locks. Cinco de Mayo episode of Late Night with Locks. Uh, I know we're working to get Twan on here, but um, nothing special. I'm going to do Late Night with Locks, and then I'm going to probably shut it down for the night. Let's see what else we got on here. A lot of people from Baltimore aren't too happy that I got the Steelers on it. I think I addressed that earlier. Um, again, I'm a Raven Redskin guy. Um, I love both teams. One's on the NFC, one's on the AFC, so I can do that. Um, I, I like the Steelers when they don't play those teams only because of relationships. And as you heard, this is a relationship business and very fortunate that the relationship that we have uh, with the Steeler organization, with, again, my relationship with Mike T., uh, Scotty Montgomery's our offensive coordinator, worked with uh, Coach Tomlin with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then Matt Canada being up there as the quarterback coach now. So a lot of connections that enabled to bring – I'm going to bring this guy on now. Um, Rondo, what's up, man? Yeah. What's good, Coach? Can you hear me fine? I don't know, man. Are you social distancing? Are you being safe out there? Yeah, of course, of course. I was, you, you know, sure? I just got done working out, so that's it. Okay, you had me a little nervous. I don't know if you saw the five straight text messages. It was like you felt like you were still in college when, where are you? Why aren't you answering? Will you hurry up? And you felt like you was back, back, back doing last season when you would get those text messages. Yeah, a little something, a little something, not too much. <laughs> so tell me how the quarantine is treating the Brooks household, man. What are you guys up to? Are you at home chilling with mom? What's, what's been going on with the Brooks household during the quarantine? Everybody uh, safe? Everybody good? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, just uh, stand out the way. Uh, we, we wear our masks. We only go to the store. Um, I work out probably, you know, three, four times a day. Um, not a day. I mean, a week. I'm sorry. Uh, so, um, that's about it, about quarantine life. I don't really do nothing else. With have, you started, have you guys started your virtual OTAs yet on the defensive side of the ball there? Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, Coach Tom, he uh, hooked me up with uh, Coach uh, Tom Brady and Coach T. Austin. So, um, I'm, um, I'm more locked in than before. So, I'm, you know, getting ready, you know, just preparing myself. Gotcha. Talking about preparation, you know, you were one of three Terps invited to the Combine. Um, you obviously did a great job there at the combine. Uh, tell a little, talk a little bit about. Did you feel like going into the combine, based on your experience being a Terp, that you were prepared to handle probably the biggest job interview of your life, the combine? Did you feel like you learned and were were uh, developed the right way that you were able to go there and have success at the combine, whether it's the workout piece or the board knowledge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was uh, way prepared. Some people say might be uh, overly prepared. Um, you know, uh, I probably get this one advice. You know, less you talk, you know, the more it is, the better it is. Um, you know, I talk. I saw. I question. When have you not talked? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I just get the going. <laughs> I just get the going. <laughs> so I mean, but uh, I mean, but you know, I was getting better as it, you know, as interviews came and interviews go. Um, but you know. I, I was really, you know, overly prepared. I wasn't really, you know, worried about too much. Uh, uh, it's probably a mental thing, you know, they get they getting you up around, you know, six, you know, six, seven o'clock, and you going to sleep around eleven. So you know, you know, it's a lot of sleep. All day. That's yeah, what the real know. world. That's what that yeah. real world calls for. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that real world, that grown up, grown, <laughs> grown butt man stuff that I always yeah. talk to you about. Yeah, it, all it the takes time. what it takes, right? It yeah, takes what it so, takes. Now. Yeah. There was one guy that, I don't know if you've seen me lately, but when I heard your name called, I, I had to take a lap around the house. I was screaming and yelling. So I know how, how I felt from an emotional standpoint. Take us back to a week or two ago when you heard your name called and the emotions. But I had a chance to watch the video. But what was that like, man, that life-changing uh -huh. phone call? And take us about, tell us a little bit about those emotions that went through your mind. 
Um, honestly, uh, you know, I wanted to tear up a lot, but you know, you know, so I didn't tear up. So I don't know when that's gonna come. It's probably gonna come whenever. Uh, but I probably when I put my Steelers helmet on for the first time, I'll probably cry some. But you know, I ain't cry yet. So I've been, you know, taking the time, uh, just breathing, and you know, you know, every day I wake up, I probably and I'm, I'm like, dang, like. I'm already, I'm already here. Like, yeah, it's time. Like, yeah, I'm a stealer. Like, I'm not, I'm not a turtle no more. So, um, you know, just moving fast. You know, I think about, you know, the stuff that you do on a daily basis. So, um, everything is time management. So, um, I still, I treat it like that still. Even, you know, during quarantine, I got all the time in the world, you know. But still, you know, you still got to do things, two things, you know, still in the time matter the way. Well, I know that you're, uh, you have a tight-knit family, man. Mom, dad brothers, cousins, playing right down the road from your high school, really. Um, talk a little bit about the experience of having stayed home and then the benefits that you felt came with being a guy that stayed home playing here for the Turks uh, and what that meant to you and your family to have that opportunity. Um, it meant a lot to me. Uh, I brought my family together, you know, just for playing football. Um, and, you know, they always they all come see me. You know, we probably be 40, 60 deep. Um, I love that. That's probably the best feeling ever, you know, to see that your family, you know, represent you very well. Um, uh, I don't, I can't find no better, you know, family that's 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 tighter than mine, you know. Um, I'm very blessed about that. Um, we take pride, you know, in, in our family. So um, I'm happy that, you know, I'm, I'm in that type of family. I thank God every day that I'm, you know, I got the type of cousins and aunts I got. Um, they always making sure I'm fine. They always making sure, you know, is 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 there something wrong with me and stuff like that. So, you know, I got I got a hundred I I got a hundred you know ask questions to answer. You know, every time I come I step in a cookout or something like that. So, so you know, it's just it's just what it is, what it is. So, and I, I guess you know I'm the one that's ready for it. You know, and I guess you know God you know put me in to be born for it. So. No, you know, just, I know yeah. this. The one thing that I knew that I could guarantee was every day that you would bring the energy and juice. And I, as I told Coach T and those guys during the process, that you are an energy guy. You're a great locker room guy. You're a great leader for us, even through some tough times here, man. And, you know, to me, I think, as we like to say, uh, you're training every day. You're training for something. And I know that whatever we went through as an organization, whatever you went through as a turf, has really prepared you for more than anything to face whatever it is in life. And you were like the guy that when I talk about the toughness, the smart, the reliable the guy that show up and play, win, lose, or draw, you're going to get the best. That's what the expectation is for you going to the steel organization. Before I let you go, man, you got to gotta help us out. I ask every Terp I interview this me, what was your favorite memory of being a Terp? <sighs> Uh, you got four years of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I remember. Give you, all right, I'm gonna give you Texas one. From, go ahead, give me one. I give you one from each year. Uh, my my freshman year. Um, probably you know seeing the, you know the smiles and faces on the vets when we uh finally hit that bowl. You know when we, when we got to the bowl. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, yeah. That that was probably a crazy, crazy time. Then you know I spent a lot of time with them at uh, Christmas and stuff like that. So then it got us more close, you know, especially like us freshmen. And then you know it got us even more bonded. So then the sophomore year, um, probably you know having the, the fans yell a lot when we was wearing that yellow on homecoming against Indiana, and that was actually on my birthday. So that that's you mean the goal. You yeah, the gold. The, the, the gold. I'm sorry. Okay. You're right. You're right. It's the gold. But that thing, that thing was looking a little too beautiful when we was out there on my birthday. So that was that was a great moment. Then you like you know, wearing the you like wearing the alter, uh, alternative uniform, the, the gold with the black. The yeah, old that school. Thing, okay. That thing, that thing beautiful. Man. All right. Yeah, that was, that was year. Yeah, that now my junior year. Stayed. All right, hold yeah. up. We got a little little difficulty with your Wi-Fi. Stop moving oh. around. All right, you good. Your Wi-Fi right, is good now. I'm back. I'm back. All right. Uh, I said, I think. Yep.
man. So I think I heard you say the pick in the Texas game because you're kind of in and out with your Wi-Fi over there. What you on? Uh, uh, what you got? Junior, yeah. Hold on. Am I back? That better? You back, man. You got to get off that Metro Index. You're a pro now. You should be able to get uh, some Metro Verizon. Index. <laughs> no offense to Metro Index. They, they're, they're not a sponsor of Late Night with Locks yet. That's a joke. My bad. I'm sorry, Metro Index. <laughs> <laughs> but look. Oh, my junior year, I caught the pick against, you know, Texas. Right. It was actually, yeah, a crazy. That was a crazy moment. Um, I wanted that pick, you know, the whole time. If you're a football player, you dream about stuff before it happened. Um, and that's, you know, that I dreamed about it. Um, yeah. Senior year. And then last year. Yeah, it was probably, you know, just us getting together. Um, we, us coming stronger every time, you know, stuff, stuff happened or, like, we, we took an L. I just, you know, I, I love the part, the fact that, you know, a lot of young guys came up and got better and stronger, you know, as the time go. Um, I love that I seen, like, Deontay Banks and Gator and, you know, Nick Cross and, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of freshmen just contributing to, to the, you know, to the vets and stuff like that. Because, you know, I ain't never had a problem with nobody. You know, everybody, you know, respected me. Um, even, you know, you know how you used to, you know, go get me to go talk to some people, you know. So, I mean, I just, it's just, you know, knowing that uh, Merlin, you know, still got, a, you know, a bright future in, 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 at hand. Um, it's just probably the best feeling. Um, I just wanted to leave my mop, you know, before I left. And I think I pretty I pretty much did it. And, you know, a lot of young people, like, uh, you know, the couple of names I just said, they, they probably, I, I think they probably see, like, the pride and the passion and, you know, and, you know, the, the play that I uh, play with. So, you know, as long as, you know, they got that, you know, in their hearts and in their head and on film, you know, I, I don't really got too much to worry about. Well, you, you left a, a, a huge mark here on that defense. Uh, those young players you named, we played a lot of freshmen, and, and you left the, the, the approach, uh, the work ethic, and all the things it takes, how to practice, you know, the process part of it. And so, I do feel like your senior group, man, laid and left a foundation that, as I tell people, it's time to take the next step in year two for us. Um, those young guys that you name are now sophomores that played a lot of football for us. Uh, they learned from some savvy vets like you and Keandre on that side of the ball and, and, and all the other guys on the offensive side of the ball. So the Turp Nation can't thank you enough for your commitment, man, for your resiliency, fighting day in and day out. Uh, you know, making a decision to stay home. And, you know, we, we, we got a good little thing going, man. And we're looking forward to following you as a pro. I think you, you'll be a, a great, great pro because of the way you play the game. You fit great up in Steel City. And so, man, we just want to wish you luck. Stay healthy. Be smart. As I used to tell you every Friday, be yeah. smart, make good choices and decisions, man. And, uh, you know, anytime you need, you need anything back here, we got you. Yes, sir. Yeah, and Great I thank you for having me. And Twan, Twan Doe Brooks on Late Night with Locks. Thank you so uh -huh. much, Twan. Appreciate you, big man. We'll man, talk soon. You. Thank you, Cup. Yeah. Again, man, what a great show. An opportunity to catch up with a Super Bowl winning head football coach and Mike T. Coach Tomlin, can't thank him enough for coming on. As I know the type of schedule that uh, as a head coach we keep and for him to take carve out a little time out of his schedule, very appreciative of it. And then an opportunity to talk with a, a, a former Turk, uh, present day Pittsburgh Steelers and Antoine Brooks, uh, one of those guys that made the decision early to stay at home to help build this program. And, you know, he got him to a bowl game as a freshman and then laid a tremendous uh, foundation that we want to build upon. Again, thanks so much to all our viewers, people that came on uh, to the show. Um, again, this is another opportunity to just connect, and we're very appreciative of your time. I look forward to seeing you guys this Friday. Stay tuned uh, for our guest on Friday. Uh, we'll be releasing it uh, here in the next day or two. You guys be safe tonight. Have a great Cinco de Mayo. Also, I'm supposed to give a shout-out to our uh, current team. I know we had a lot of Terps on late night with locks tonight. I miss you guys. I look forward to getting back together soon. Be smart. Make good choices and decisions, fellas. Good night.
See you on Friday, 7 o'clock Eastern.